I'm Justin Horowitz, and I'm joined now by Renato Mariotti, a former federal prosecutor who is the first assistant U.S. attorney to actually jail a high-frequency trader with the news that Trump's stock is collapsing. Now, there are a number of implications, Renato, about this Trump stock and different issues it raises, but you're specifically focused on campaign finance. Can you tell us why? Sure. So look, as a starting point, I think everyone knows that we have a lot of rules around campaign finance, right? If you wanted to have a GoFundMe for your campaign finance uh, for your election, you'd have to ask a lot of questions. You need to make sure that people are not contributing over certain limits. You would need to find out information about them, right? If they're contributing uh, more than a couple hundred bucks, you're going to have to find out what their occupation is, who their employer is, and so on. So that this way, their contributions can be tracked. And you also need to make sure that that the people contributing to your campaign, for example, are U.S. persons. They're not you're not getting all your money from China or Russia or someplace like that. Well, what Trump has done with the Trump media IPO is really something. And there's been a lot of people talking about it. I know on this channel, you've had a lot of folks talking about it. And it's interesting, right? It's like a meme stock, essentially, uh, but by a presidential candidate. So we've seen. GameStop, uh, Bed Bath & Beyond, AMC, all these stocks with absurd valuations. Here, Trump has a stock um, for a company that has like three employees. It loses money. It's got almost no revenues, but yet it's supposedly worth billions and billions of dollars. And it's just because his supporters are propping up the price. If they donated to his campaign, well, they'd have limits. There'd be a lot of, of, uh, of scrutiny about that. But instead... They're propping up the price of this company to absurd levels, far more than its actual value is. And it's giving Trump access to capital. Though let's face it, he doesn't have because we just saw that when the guy was trying to get money for a bond, he couldn't come up with a half a billion dollars. So he's come, he now suddenly has access to billions that he in, in stock that he can borrow against, for example, or that he could sell. Um, potentially if he gets a vote from the board, he has a six month lockout period, but he could of course get rid of that. That can, Justin, that can have massive implications on our presidential election because as we've seen, Joe Biden is out raising him by massive margins. Right. And with, with the stock, there's no way of figuring out whether it's foreign entities who are propping up the price of the stock, right? It's very hard to, to determine that unless people are buying large quantities. In other words, if people are buying large enough stakes in the company, then they, they, their identities uh, are going to be re receiving a lot of scrutiny. But, you know, you don't have to have one person buy up all the shares. I mean, that's possible. That could happen. And by the way, if it happened, of course, Trump would welcome it, right? And, and if some Russian oligarch bought up all these shares, uh, you know, he wouldn't recuse, you know, wouldn't recuse himself from any decision making. He wouldn't be putting those shares in a blind trust. We saw in his first term of his presidency that he really had very little regard for the ethical norms that a president has. But putting all that to the side, uh, it'd be very simple to have all sorts of different people, multiple different buyers coordinating with each other to purchase shares. A bunch of people purchasing uh, shares would would be very difficult to uh, pin down or trace or try to um, to try to do anything with, particularly since those you know individuals can have their purchases disguised in some way. So it's not they could purchase through an entity, for example, making it very challenging to determine the origin. As a practical matter, we may not find out who's propping up the price of Truth Social uh, and the Trump Media IPO. Uh, until after he's already elected. Yeah, and I've been reading there's a ton of different ways that um, the stock price can be manipulated in this case. How would the SEC or whatever regulatory body go about investigating if this is happening? And if Trump were to, for some reason, win the election, would an investigation end before the election? Or could he basically be running and let's manipulate the stock price, let's do all this illegal activity, because by the time anyone finds out, I could be president? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, people talk a lot about uh, things like pump and dump, right? So pump and dump is where you take usually a penny stock, something that's not very liquid, and you try to convince a bunch of people to buy it. They do that. You don't tell them that you already own a whole ton of shares. 
and once the stock price goes up, then you sell and you watch them lose money. That's pump and dump. I do think that there's going to be some scrutiny of like exactly which accounts and who's pushing the stock and so on for that sort of activity. I also think there's going to be a lot of scrutiny as to the statements that Trump uh, is making. And I'm just going to say, uh, Justin, you know, I think he's got some lawyers who've been looking very carefully at this because the underlying numbers being released for Trump media are horrible, which is why it tumbled by <laughs> over 20 percent today. So I think that's why, because he's concerned about the SEC intervening. They have a very active chairman. But you're right. If Trump gets elected, you can expect him to order the new SEC commi uh, commissioners, the new SEC chairman to quash uh, any potential investigation of him, just like, you know, his new handpicked attorney general might just do away with any criminal investigation of him, federal criminal investigation of him, uh, which is just another reason why this election is so important. So we've seen this time and time again. Trump has a reckless disregard for the law, for his lawyer's advice um, during trials. Do you think that Trump's playbook quite literally is, if I become president, I can just weaponize all of these agencies and make them stop investigating me? I definitely think in the criminal, particularly when it comes to the criminal cases, that's his strategy. I mean, there's no viable real defense, for example, to the Mar-a-Lago case i mean that's literally he's got like classified documents in his bathroom his ballroom <laughs> I, I don't know what, how you defend i mean you you your 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 viewers don't have to be lawyers to know that that's just very hard to craft a defense and really his whole strategy has been delay 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 which is not a bad strategy if you can become president and then essentially order i don't know jeffrey clark or john eastman or somebody like that to um to uh essentially do away with all of your legal problems Regarding the SEC, I mean, right now it's obvious Trump needs access to capital and he just got really bailed out here. He got access to potentially billions of dollars bailed out, not just by people who are helping to set this up and get this IPO going, but also literally thousands and thousands and thousands of people across this country who've been deceived by this guy who essentially are pumping up the stock price just because they like him. And not really for any of the underlying fundamentals. They're effectively giving their money away, uh, but they're giving it away to Donald Trump in a way that's not regulated, in a way that's not easily traced, uh, and in a way that may very well influence the election. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So how do how does one even go about investigating if this was a you know organized scheme to subvert campaign finance law? Is there a way to figure out whether this was a conspiracy that was intentional or he was just trying to make a bunch of money and it happens to coincide with his election. What's the process of, of figuring that out? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if people do end up taking a look at this, but it's tricky, right? Because any, uh, any presidential candidate can own a company. If, if Elon Musk decides to run, you know, they, they'll say, well, can you scrutinize Tesla or SpaceX or whatever? Uh, the fact of the matter here. Um, is that it does look awfully uh, fishy, uh, given that you know he suddenly needed a lot of money, and then here we've got this big IPO, and his net worth is skyrocketing. Uh, it's obviously going to raise a lot of questions, and I think it really kind of points to almost a, a loophole in our laws. In other words, we have all these campaign finance laws, but one thing the Supreme Court has done is it basically says you can spend unlimited amounts of your own money. OK, if that's your own money, if you're, uh, you know, Ross Perot and you decide to enter the race. But what if you're just using essentially a crowdsourcing mechanism to make yourself wealthy so that you could spend that money in the race? It does seem like an end run around the campaign finance laws. It'll be interesting to see what the Federal Electric Commission has to do about it. Yeah, it's crazy. Even in the era of Citizens United, where you have unlimited dark money, it's like Trump has pushed the envelope yet again on what is above board and what is possible and even attempting to skirt the law. Renata Mariotti, thank you so much for joining us. That's former federal prosecutor weighing as, as Trump's stock crashes today. We're going to have Renato on breaking down all the le latest legal issues uh, going forward. Thanks so much for coming on again with us. Thank you.